Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. All We're right. going to see how this works. All right. You want me to sit by the computer and hit next slide for me? Oh, I, oh, I got a, I have a solution. See, the thing about being a professional, you don't always know the answer, but you know where to find it. <laughs> and I don't mind seeking out advice from the right people. Solution? All right. How are everybody doing? Can y'all hear me good? Yeah. I usually real good at projecting my voice. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I'm very passionate about educating people on this because a lot of people aren't aware of how this is and how this works. Uh, we're going to be talking about wills. We're going to be talking about trust. Uh, how many people already have a will in place? How many people already have a trust in place? All right. So we're going to talk about it. Which one's better, a will or a trust? Ah, you must be an attorney. <laughs> the answer is always depends. And usually, you know, I have this plan, but you know, we already here. Anybody can, so I'm going to do a little trivia at first, right? Can anybody tell me who this is? Red Fox. Red Fox, all right. Anybody know this guy? There you go. How about this guy? Oh, yeah. Uh, can't get enough of your love, babe. Yeah. How about her? All right. Y'all, y'all know her as Kennedy or as, or as Onassis. Yeah, okay. Who is that? There you go. I don't even know. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just joking. Who, who knows this guy? Okay, of course. How about this guy? All right, young Michael or old Michael? What y'all like better? Uh, yeah, I, like, I like them all. I like them all. All right, how about her? Nobody? Think about it, see? Uh, you good. You want, a, you, want, you want an extra point? Yeah. I got some cookies in the bag. Babe. Jimi Hendrix, all right. Sunny Funk, uh huh. Oh, yeah, what did you say? Y'all like that? It's a good look. What, what was that song that him and um, his, his ex-wife used to do? What was it they were known for? I got you, babe. I got you, babe. Yeah. Yeah. Princess Die. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sammy Davis. The King of Soul. Jerry. Yeah. I just, I, y'all just needed a hint. When he passed away, he was the richest man in the world. Yeah. And your boy, right? What, what, what do all of them have in common? Do y'all know? Name recognition. They had some form of celebrity. They're all passed away. And they all died without a will or trust. Right? And we're going to go into uh, some of the examples of what happened. Like, for example, it took... Uh, uh, it took Martin Luther King's trust, uh, it took 45 years for them to settle everything. Because, you know, you got speech rights and all that stuff, and it, it happens all the time. But just a little bit about me, right? Other than I have the same suit jacket on, my name is Randolph Love III. Uh, I'm a chartered financial consultant, chartered life underwriter, chartered property casualty underwriter. I'm a wealth strategist. Uh, I'm registered with the Florida Department of Financial Services. I actually do pre-licensing and continuing education for a lot of the major carriers, as well as government entities, uh, as well as other uh, uh, entities throughout the state of Florida. Uh, I also provide training and consulting to those same agencies, okay? And I'm only 36, but you know, I don't waste no time, all right? I also assist individuals with tax minimization, all right? Because I know you, you definitely want to know uh, who you're talking to, right? Uh, YouTube is a great learning source. I love YouTube, but you never really know, right? If what their credentials are, or what they do is uh, for real, okay? Here's my team, and, and I just want to get this stuff out of the way just so you, uh, you know, sometimes people listen a little better depending on when they know where the source is coming from. Uh, one thing that I learned, all truths are parallel. Where you drink from a, 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 a river without knowing where the water is coming, right? Just like the same when it does with information. Uh, here's the team of people that I work with. Uh, we have uh, 
My ma now, this is the main guy, right? Uh, I think everybody should have a friend that graduated from Harvard, right? That's my Harvard graduate friend. Uh, we also have uh, Sierra Lester. Uh, she's the attorney, once again. Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't make it today. You know, uh, once you know, the news came out, you know, other people's uh, you know, changed, right? I had some people that were flying down. Uh, I, actually, my friend in the back, he flew down, but uh, he's going to be flying right back out. I had other people that was flying down, but once they saw the weather, people who are not from Florida, those weather reports will scare you, right? And you can't really, you know, you can't really be mad at them because you know that there's a chance that it's going to be catastrophic. But most of the time, you know, like you say, it's just some rain, right? Uh, but here's the team of people I work with. Uh, the reason why it's important I think to have a team because if you only have a financial advisor, and this is where the lessons and learning start, y'all. If you have just one person handling your stuff, what happens when something happens to them? Right? You want to know that if, you know, I'm down in Cabo and I get some alcohol poisoning or whatever happens, that you still have a team of people that you can reach out to, right? And here's the, and that's the team I, uh, I work with. But more specifically, like I said, my friend Andrew, uh, he is the director of planning strategies. Uh, he's the guy that goes through and, you know, basically organizes everything to get you a tax-free retirement. Uh, graduated from Harvard in 1993. Uh, 22 years of experience in the financial services industry. I was just uh, with Andrew in Huntington Beach, California last, uh, last week. Everybody was dressed like me. Andrew was walking around in a, in, a, uh, in a golf shirt and some shorts and flip flops. Everybody knew who, who didn't have nothing to prove there, right? Uh, uh, 22 years of experience in the financial services industry, and he specializes in tax efficient uh, income planning and wealth tr transfer and estate uh, planning business succession. And he consults with risk and tax mitigation strategies with a focus on lifetime income. Here's Sierra. Uh, everybody knows when you're dealing with a trust, you definitely want to have an attorney, right? Uh, it's a bunch of attorney jokes, right? But when you're dealing with a trust, you want somebody who knows what they're doing. She had a full scholarship and a graduate uh, of uh, the Ave Marie, Maria School of Law in Naples, Florida, uh, focus on estate planning to help people avoid negative effects of probate. And Sierra believes in three pillars, planning, preparation, and prevention. One thing that you will notice when you look at my team and look at Sierra, which is the attorney on it, I keep women around me. Uh, y'all, y'all are very good at multitasking. Uh, y'all, y'all, when it comes to us trying to shoot for the moon, you have a way of saying, "Hey, let's think about this. Let's 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 uh, do the liabilities. Let's let's consider everything before we go uh, going." And I keep, I love to keep women around me uh, for. You know, for one of those reasons, right? Uh, Sierra helps raise funds to cover medical bills for dogs and animal shelters. So, you know, she likes dogs. So I got that out the way, right? So let's get ready to learn. So what happens, can anybody ask, answer this question? What happens if you don't have any legacy in place? If you don't have an estate plan? Do y'all know what happens to? Yeah, the, the court. They determine what your estate is, and they're going to go off of of what it is. They don't know your family at all. They don't know who you wanted to have the, uh, the baseball cards. They don't know who you wanted to have the china. The, 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 the judge is going to decide all this. And if you have a will in place, of course, it's going to give the judge a, a road map on what to do. But they don't have to follow that. And once again, one thing about a will is it guarantees probate. What is probate? To prove. To prove what you owe and who you owe. If you don't mind your family and whoever your beneficiaries having to go through court in order to get to your assets, cool. However, if you do mind, there's another way. Okay? Let's go down. All right. There, we're going to talk about seven everyday situations that can lead to emotional and tragic results and how to prepare for them. When I go over these scenarios, when you look in the, on the back sheet of your green sheet, you're going to see a bunch of scenarios that we're going to talk about. These are common scenarios that happen to people every day, but when you don't have the right things in place, uh, it can be tragic, right? We're going to talk about how to wipe the ultimate 
love note to your family. Or well, when you have the trust set up with the right people, not only will everything go smoothly, not only will all of your inventory and your assets be private, because you know when you go through probate, everything is made public, right? Uh, go to CaseNet. If y'all really wanted to know, uh, if y'all have any friends that passed away relatively recently or even not so recently, you want to know what all they had? Go to CaseNet, because I can almost guarantee you they did not have trust. And if they did have a trust, it wasn't properly funded. We're going to talk about how most attorneys, they're going to charge you that, uh, you know, that, that amount to get your trust going, but then they're going to give you a separate package to do what they call funding your trust. And what does that mean? That means retitling everything. And that can take anywhere from 30 to 60 days, depending on uh, what you're doing it with. If you're doing it under the right terms and the right laws, it can be done within 30 minutes. Or it can take up to six month, uh, uh, two months. Or it can never get done at all. Because once again, most people usually don't fund their trust. They have this beautiful book. It's leather bound, has a tassel, has some heavy weighted pages, not funded. And if you never heard that before, keep, keep listening. How to develop tax-free income. Is there anybody in here that's getting taxed on their Social Security? Did you know that Social Security is supposed to be tax-free? It's because of the other bad income that you have. And I call it bad income. It's just not situated correctly. We're going to talk about how we can eliminate that for you. At the very least, reduce it substantially. Okay. How to potentially lower or eliminate taxes on your Social Security, like I was saying. All right, so there is a green sheet in front of you. Um, you know, I do this on a regular basis. And at the very least, if you can just fill out the top, because when they come, for, when the when they come to me, they say, hold up. Not only are you not paying taxes, what's going on? Like, what's going on? I need to show that, hey, I spend money to educate people. So if you can just, you know, at the very least, uh, fill out the top. Uh, there are other things down there, but y'all don't have to worry about that for now. Uh, but at the very least, just fill out the top just so I can prove that I actually be doing stuff and not just uh, saying that I teach people. I actually be teaching, all right? Uh, if you need to take a call, please step outside. We understand there are people who need you, right? That's why you're here. Uh, restrooms, if you go out this door, there are restrooms to the left, and then if you go a little further, there are restrooms to the right, all right? And please write your questions on the handout, because I know we already got started late. I know that y'all time is important. If you have any questions, please just write it down, because uh, if I start answering one question, it's like a cascading effect, all right? But I, I truly believe once we get into this, uh, Y'all are going to have some questions. So just write it down for me if you don't mind. So anybody ever heard about Jed, farmer named Jed? All right. So I'm, I'm going to exaggerate this story a little bit, right? But here's Jed. He's a farmer. He's 88 years old. His wife just passed away. And, and he doesn't have any uh, other relatives, uh, no, no brothers, no, no mother, no anything. All Jed has is this beautiful estate, right? You see the guest house right there? See the well manicured line? Look, they, they, got, a, they got a little maze right here, right? He got, you know you got way too much money when you, you, you creating plants that make mazes, right? All right? Y'all want to meet Jed? I can introduce you. Okay, guess. <laughs> oh, he has no, yeah, he has no event, nobody. But, but he does have his daughter, Ellie Mae. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no family except Ellie Mae. And let me tell you what, Jed, Jed didn't get this lovely estate for nothing. Jed is somebody who, who he thinks about things, right? And when Jed thinks about his daughter, he says, all right, I have my beautiful daughter, Ellie Mae, right? But chances are I'm going to die before her. I'm 88. She's still, she's still brand new, relatively, right? Uh, chances are I'm going to die before her and I'm going to leave all this responsibility to her. Not to say that she can't handle it, because like I told you, I keep women around me for a reason, right? Y'all can handle this stuff, right? But not to say that she can't handle it, but he, he's thinking ahead, right? He say, I want to I try to do something to make sure that Ellie Mae, my daughter, isn't overwhelmed with all this responsibility. So what did Jed do? He sent out a mailer to all of the eligible bachelors in the area, about 25, all right? He invited them to his lovely estate. He fed them. 
He gave them good drink. You know, those rich people, they drank, you know, they drank $200 pours. You know what I mean? It, it, not bottles, pours, right? He, he, he fed them. He, he, he gave them uh, good food. And he said, all right, y'all, at, at the stroke of midnight, he said, y'all come to this backyard. I'm going to tell you why I really invited you here. All right? He said, I invited you here because I have a beautiful daughter, Ellie Mae. And I sent this mailer out to all of the eligible bachelors, not just eligible, people who I think would be a good fit for my daughter. And I have a, I have a competition to see who could qualify. I want you to jump into this pool and make it to the other side. I want you to have the courage to jump into this pool and I want you to have the skill to make it to the other side. And, and not to mention, we got alligators in this pool, right? We got snakes in this pool. We got piranha in this pool. If you got the courage and you have the skill, I want you to jump into this pool. And before he could finish, he said he could finish anything out of his mouth. Because before, before this happened, he said, I got one of three gifts for you. He said, one is a million dollars. Two, I'm going to give you 10,000 acres of my finest property. Or three, you get my daughter's hand in marriage, right? And if you get my daughter's hand in marriage, you get everything, right? And as he said that, he hears a splash. And in 4.6 seconds, a world record, Alex comes out from the other side of the pool, right? Alex can't breathe, right? And uh, Jed says, Alex, congratulations. You, you, you won. Oh, you must want this a million dollars. He said, no, sir. I don't want this million dollars. He said, okay, well, you must want 10,000 acres of my best land. He said, no, sir, I do not want 10,000 acres of your best. He said, well, congratulations, son. Welcome to the family. You get to marry my daughter. You get everything. He said, no, sir, I do not want to marry your daughter. He said, well, he's perplexed. He's like, well, what do you want? Alice says, I want to know the name of the man who pushed me in that pool. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that one? You saw it coming? <laughs> right? You saw it coming too, right? And, and like I say, it's a, it's a good joke, right? And, and we all laugh, but what happens when somebody pushes you in the pool? Metaphorically speaking, what happens when you get a call in the middle of the night, two in the morning, that your daughter was in an accident? What happens when you get that call that your, 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 your brother-in-law is no longer here? Right? What happens when you get that call that your wife is in a coma? When they push you in the pool, you got to be ready. And a properly set up estate plan makes you ready. Right? And that's what we're going to talk about. So how are we different from other firms? All right? So of course I'm educating, but I also got to let you know what I do. Right? What makes us different? All right? We have legal, Sierra. We have tax, Andrew. And we have financial, me, right? This is all a la carte stuff, right? Uh, some people just want the, uh, the estate set up. Some people just want the tax mitigation. They're like, all right, I'm not going to voluntarily be giving away all of this money. Uh, and some people want me to set up the financial form. You don't have to get them all, but usually, once somebody learns one thing, they, they want to try to uh, you know, consolidate it. It's all about bundling, right? But, it, but you can do a la carte. You get a complimentary consultation. You get internet-based internet options that put you in control of uh, updates, changes, and saving you money. Did anybody raise their hand and say that they had an estate? All right. When you have an estate, who makes the changes? When you have an estate plan, who makes the changes? Anybody know? How do you do it? You call an attorney, right? Right? You call the attorney, right? And then the attorney comes, and of course the attorney is busy, right? They probably had a couple seminars, right? And they say, well, uh, uh, you want to make this change, and we, I want to help you out. Uh, the earliest meeting is in two weeks, all right? And then you sit down for the meeting in two weeks, and he said, all right, so we're going to change page 45. And, and when I changed page 45, I had to change page 46. And, and then 46 bled over into 47. He said, you know what? This is a little more complex than I thought. Uh, I'm going to send you the completed version in a week or so, all right? So in a week, they send you the completed version along with the invoice for another $1,200. 
you probably already paid anywhere from eight to twelve thousand dollars just to get it started now every time that you want to make a change to your trust you have to bring in that attorney and you know it's nothing wrong with that right but what if you could make these changes yourself and still be able to reach out to Sierra and get advice on the changes that you just made yourself for no extra price that's possible all right hmm? Well, like legal zoom, but legal zoom charges you, right? So, legal zoom adjacent, right? All right, and we have a home estate plan, the last estate plan you will ever need, and and partnering with Crawford Trust. Uh, some of you, once you learn more about trust, you're probably going to put one of your children, our children, in charge of your trust, and that's okay if you choose to do that, right? But there's no trust police. Let's say you're a smart person, a smart man, a smart woman, so you, you have the trust set up to where it's going to do this, that, the money's going to be distributed over this amount of time, and it's going to stay in this account, and it's going to keep making this money. What happens when your child say, man, I got my own life. I got kids. I got soccer practice. I got basketball practice. I, I can't do all of this stuff. Let's just end the trust. Did you know that your, uh, your beneficiaries are able to just say, let's just end it? But if you have a corporate trustee, that's not the case. If you have a corporate trustee, you ensure what you want to happen continues to happen throughout the life of the trust, right? All right, and, then, and here's the people at uh, Crawford Trust Company. If y'all want to do y'all research on it, these are the people that I use. Uh, if you are looking to research corporate trustees, check out Crawford Trust Company. All right, so why a trust company? Once again, it's just because of what I said. It's you get to set the terms. Now, anybody in here own a business or has ever owned a business? There you go. Oh, yeah, uh, black-owned businesses, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, and and woman-owned. There you go. All right? Uh, they, they have a, a website, a, a, a group on Facebook. Y'all should check it out, right? All right, so anybody know about Fortune 500 companies? 64% of Fortune 5 companies uh, 100 companies are incorporated through Delaware. Even though they don't have an office there, they're incorporated through Delaware. Anybody ever heard of Boeing? Y'all know where Boeing's home office is? Uh, Seattle. They're incorporated through Delaware. Anybody ever heard of Co Coca-Cola? Their home office is in Atlanta. Incorporated through Delaware. All right? I got a trick question. Anybody know where uh, Walmart's home office is? Arkansas. Guess where they're incorporated through? Nope, South Dakota. <laughs> I told y'all it was a trick question, right? All right and, and why? I don't know, but their attorneys chose to do that. What's, that's called jurisdictional shopping, all right? Jurisdictional shopping means it doesn't matter what state you reside in. You're able to situs your in business anywhere in the United States that you want to. Whatever state gives you the best benefits. Why am I talking about jurisdictional shopping when it comes to this business? Because, you know, we're not talking about businesses right now. We're talking about trust. The reason why uh, I bring this up is the same, work, the same thing that works for these major companies, works for smaller companies, also works for individuals. You as an individual are able to choose wherever you want to cite as your trust, whatever gives you the best uh, situation, all right? And it just so happens, Nevada trust laws, no exception creditors, you can keep your money out of the hands of creditors by pre-existing tort claims. In other states, these creditors can reach into uh, without providing fraudulent, uh, without providing a fraudulent transfer. No, all states let creditors pierce trust to get uh, at the money if they can prove fraudulent transfer. Nevada, you can't get to it. Not only can they not get to it, when you want to fund your trust, it can be funded within 30 minutes, and you're able to make changes yourself. If you cite your trust in the state of Florida, it has to be on paper, and you have to go through an attorney each time to make a change and you gotta pay that bill, right? And, and, one, and once again, there's nothing wrong with going through an attorney, but if all you're doing is changing the address, you just sold a house, now you got a new one. You gotta change your trust. You just had a new child. You just had a new grandchild. You gotta change your trust, right? 
you, you always change your trust. Let me ask y'all, how much does it cost for a trust in the state of Florida? You will never know because it's always changing. How much does it cost with our program? One flat rate. I mean, that's just how it works. When you, when, you, when you have technology, when you're using technology, the reason why technology is so useful and, and is, is growing up is because it makes things like this easier and it makes it uh, easy for people like yourselves to get a better deal. Same high quality, but a better deal. And once again, it's just uh, saying again how uh, Nevada has been ranked the top state for trust for a long time. Second to, uh, and the second is, of course, is South Dakota, where, uh, where Walmart is incorporated, all right? All right, and what I do, if anybody comes and wants more information from me, I, I provide this article, Eight Reasons Why Nevada is Leading in Trust, okay? Trust Citus. Okay, they look happy, right? So how are we able to help? Chess move. All right, so estate planning's uh, our strategies. Once again, I already asked this, but what did y'all say? What's better, a trust or a will? It depends, all right? It, it definitely depends, okay? Financial strategies, growth and protection. When you have a trust set up, when I, when I got my uh, designation as a chartered financial consultant, I was a lot younger than I am now, right? And I didn't understand. I thought, I'm going here to learn how to make money. Right? That's what I thought. I said, they're going to teach me how to make money. 90% of the entire curriculum was how to keep money. Because y'all know, I'm going to tell y'all this. I know all of y'all are doing well. You know how I know? Because broke people don't show up for estate planning and wills, right? It just doesn't happen, right? So, so what happens is, so <laughs> it, it just doesn't happen, right? I'm just being honest, right? So. The way when you're setting up a trust, when you basically sealing in the net, you, you're protecting your money to where now if you, you know, if, if you're in the accumulation phase, you have more money coming in, but or if you're at retirement age, now you can protect your money from these taxes. People are going to be, y'all going to be voluntarily giving up taxes anywhere from five, 10, 20, own up into hundreds of thousands of dollars that y'all are voluntarily giving away. Uh, I think it was the movie Butch and Sundance. I think that was the name of the movie to where they're, they're walking down and uh, they got like a, uh, like a temporary job protecting bank money, right? And then they saying, I think the robbers are going to be over there, all right? I think the hijackers are going to be over there. And the person that they were walking with said they were some idiots. And he said, why? He said, because they don't rob you on the way to the bank. They rob you on the way back. When you are in retirement, y'all are on the way back from the bank. And that's when you realize all that stuff that they told you that your taxes were going to be lower in retirement, that's not true. It's the same if not higher, right? You might not be making as much income, but the percentage is the same if not higher right now. A majority of the people that I hang out with are at least 20 years older than me. And they tell me what they were told was not true, right? Tax planning strategies, and that's what we do. We figure out how to stop this tax on your Social Security. All right. We figure out how to uh, make it a tax free retirement income. We figure out uh, tax strategies and growth protection. They look happy as well. I think they got uh, they got they got their money set up straight. Why we exist and why we're here. Percentage of Americans who have a will. How many know how many people know currently what's the percentage of Americans who have currently have a will? Give me give me a good guess. Anybody? 25? 30? Those are some good guesses. 40% of people have a will currently in the United States. How many people, what's the percentage of people who currently have trust? Do y'all know? It's a good guess. 10? That's a good guess. Real close. 60%? Ah, oh, man, you've been very optimistic about the American people. 17%. And of that 17%, how many people trusts are funded? And once again, what the funding is, is the inventory. Most people, they get that beautiful book, like I mentioned, but they never fund their trust. Because what happens is the attorneys, they give you a, a package and they say, all right, this is what you do to fund your trust. All right. And let's say you hire a paralegal 
and they, 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 they type up all of the, the, the documents correctly, and then they send it out to all these different uh, places to get uh, everything retitled in your trust name. That's funding it, right? And then 30 days later, you get a letter back from approximately 30% of those people say, hey, appreciate the letter, but you, only, you can only do it on our paperwork. And then you have to fill out their paperwork, send it on back, all right? That's 60 days. A lot of people don't even do it. And if you talk to your attorneys, your estate attorneys, most of them are not going to do it for you because they don't want the liability. We do it for you. And it's done, it's funded within 30 minutes. Okay, so nearly half, so what are the findings? Of all respondents uh, believe that is, and this came from an article, this is a source of what do Americans think about estate planning, all right? So all respondents believe that estate planning is only for the ultra-rich and most people don't need it. Do anybody know what the, the minimum is uh, for you to have to go through probate? Does anybody know the number? The minimum is $40,000. Now, I didn't look, but some of y'all drove here in 40000 I didn't look, but am I not right? Some of y'all drove in here in vehicles worth 40000 You already are at the criteria, right? 25% haven't spoken about it with their families because they don't like to think about their own death. What's another way to say that? Everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody want to die. And they believe if you talk about it, you're going to die. I say, what, you don't want none of that milk and honey? Right? <laughs> but if you do it right, you can get milk and honey here. All right? 49% say their assets aren't worth enough to consider in a state plan, and like I said, in most states, Florida included, 40,000, that's the threshold. Once you hit 40, you're sending your family to probate. And if you don't mind sending your, sending your family to court, that's okay. But, and, and when it goes through probate, like I said, everything is made public. All y'all have to do is go to CaseNet right now and search for the probate, and you will see everybody's business, all right? If you have a trust set up, Nobody sees your business. 61% say a will is enough to meet their estate-related needs. What does a will guarantee? What did I say? Probate. It, it guarantees probate. And another word for probate is court. If all you have is a will, you are guaranteeing probate. But once again, it's better than nothing because at least it gives the judge a, a guideline of what to do. But the judge has now become your grantor settler instead of you being your own grantor settler. All right? 35% have experienced or know someone who has experienced family conflict as a result of having an estate plan or, or of not having an estate plan or comprehensive will. I thought this, I mean, I've been fortunate enough so far to where I haven't had a lot of. Uh, people died that was very close to me yet, because you know, it's gonna happen, right? I've been fortunate enough, but I've been around it. And that's, this is what breaks up families. These kids, your kids, your, they're not gonna fight over the money, they're gonna fight over the stuff. You didn't even know it was important. That, that mug that you use every morning to drink, they swear that you said you, they were supposed to get it. Son said, nah. Dad wanted me to have it. Da no, dad wanted me to have it. Now, dad went, now they don't talk for five Christmases. If you hope it's just five Christmases. I know people who haven't talked to their siblings. They, they, went, they went their entire lives without having any turmoil. Once the monarch of the family passed away, it broke up the whole family. But what if you had a trust set up that had everything lined up and you had a video saying why you did what you did? Oh, hey, but they're going to be mad at you, not each other. I'd rather y'all be mad at me while I'm dead and still hang out. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, and 40%, 46% of Americans say that they are interested in learning more about estate planning. Y'all are part of the 46%. And like I said, broke people don't show up to this, right? So y'all did good, and y'all still doing better, all right? And, and hopefully uh, y'all can share this knowledge because y'all already understand this. Uh, I'm educating and, I'm, and 
Did y'all learn anything so far? Yeah. All right, so I'm educating, but y'all know that, but you know, I'm hoping that I get some business, you know, maybe, maybe not, right? Uh, but everybody needs to learn this. Whatever you learn, whether you work with me or not, share this with your friends, share this with your family, share this with your neighbors, okay? So why might you and your family need an estate plan? Let's see. All right. So here are a few scenarios. If y'all look on the back of your sheet, some of you already proactively got to it. But let's check out this scenario. A couple is in a car accident. All right. Their adult children come to the hospital but can't get information. Who knows why they can't get information? Yep. The parents are over 18 and they never did that health. Yep, the health care. Just one paper. And you, you, you already have one set up. I can tell, yeah. And, and, and how many times have you seen people come in saying, hey, those are our parents. How do we know? Oh, not yet? No, no. Mm hmm You ran into it? Oh, my God. A lot. What did you do? What, what was your... CNA, the MMA, I was in the accident. Ah. Uh-huh. Wouldn't let him tell anybody. I can't tell you nothing. Wow. And I was unconscious. Mm-hmm. And the whole place filled up with people. Mm. Couldn't tell them nothing. Couldn't tell them nothing. They wanted me to sign something to be able to talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, if he would have had this health care trust, it would have been done, right? Mm, it was done, but, in, but not in the way that you want. <laughs> All right. Yeah, what you talking about? Hey, five Christmases. Hey, it's been 10 Christmases, 15 Christmases, right? I was Santa Claus at Dunkin' Donuts, man. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, man. And once again, we, we want to try to avoid these things, right? And you're able to avoid it if you proactively plan for it. And it's all done in a properly set up estate, okay? So would that be a concern for anybody in here? Anybody? Okay. Got it. Scenario two, death of the parents. So let's say um, Brad Winter right here, his wife is the uh, primary beneficiary. The son is the secondary beneficiary. What if both of them are in a, in a car accident and the son was in the, uh, in the back seat, all died? What if that happens? And I'm not saying nothing crazy. This stuff happens all the time, right? What happens? Because what a lot of people say is, all you have to do is put your child as a beneficiary to your accounts, your child as a beneficiary to your IRA, your child as a beneficiary, and when I say accounts, I'm talking about your banking accounts. Your child is a beneficiary to your home. It, that, that settles everything. Actually, now nah, what just happened is all of your beneficiaries, your, your primary and your contingent, just died simultaneously. And I know what some of y'all would say, well, my, those, those two girls that you saw earlier, let's see, where they at? Let's go back to, uh, what, I'll just call them Stacy and Nancy, right? You say, Stacy and Nancy, they're still alive, right? But what did you just do by just following uh, uh, naming uh, beneficiaries? You just unintentionally disinherited your grandchildren. Now, if you don't care about that, that's cool. But if you want to make sure there's a line of secession that doesn't unintentionally disinherit who you don't want to disinherit, there's a better way, a properly set up trust. Okay? Would that be a concern for anybody? Maybe. For a lot of people. What about scenario t three? Joint tendency. What do they say? You want to avoid probate. Put your daughter and son's name on the title. Put your daughter and son's name on your bank accounts. You know, just put their name on it, right? And yes, if you do that, you do successfully avoid probate. Does anybody know what you invite when you do that, though? Do you know? Yeah. What happens is, what happens if one of your children is going through a divorce? And they have a very smart attorney that searches to see what their names are on. And what if you have a, that $800,000 house that you just paid off? That son-in-law that just broke your daughter's heart, he, he gets half of it. It's, it's marital property. 
that name that their bank account is on. He gets half of it. It's marital property. Do you think he's going to be like, you know what? Nah, that, that wasn't us. That's a, uh, I love my in-laws, <laughs> right? Nah. They, they, when pe a lot of times when pe you don't, you know, you don't hear of a happy marriages ending in divorce, right? They're going for the juggler, right? So, so yes, joint tenancy does eliminate you having to go through probate, but you also open up the liability. You don't want to be 70 something years old and no have nowhere to live now. Or you just paid off this house. Now you're walking into the bank, you say, hey, I need to refinance my house. I need 400 grand. The person that, that's up behind the counter so knows, like, oh, well, you got to get a new pool? You about to do some remodeling? No, I'm about to pay off my son-in-law. <laughs> oh, oh, what neighborhood are you from? Um, oh, yeah, that's what I thought. I seen, I seen that movie. I seen several of them. <laughs> huh? What's that? Well, the daughter out there, 800, so 400 turns, so we get half of that, 200. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. I guess 200. Well, let's say it's a million dollar house, I'm just joking. But no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're right, because cause that, that would be the marital property. Uh, but yeah, but that 400 would have to be uh, accountable. Cause, but what if the judge says, your daughter's already getting it, but that 400 is his part? You see what I'm saying? The judge can easily say, this is your portion. Now, the, the daughter might be getting the car, might be getting this, that, and the third, but all right, uh, this part, this, 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 uh, this um, equity that you have in this home, you get all of that. That's possible. You never know what the judge is gonna do on those divorce decrees, right? And once again, the thing is, the, the big point of it is, you're leaving it up to the judge. And they found it because you put your daughter or son's name on it because you were trying to avoid probate, but you invited something else that you had no intention, right? Let's see, scenario number three. Parent puts child on the house and bank account, and we actually, you know, we talked about that, it's joint tenancy and all that, it, it works the same way, right? Uh, let's see, boom, uh, go down. All right, and like I said, they put it on the account, and that's what happens. Uh, number three. Parents could be forced to refinance, like I said, unforeseen, because we're still talking about the, the disadvantages of joint, joint tenancy. Potential loss of cash and assets. Lawsuits. What happens if you have your son or daughter who you put on your account, who you put on, and they might be great drivers. They, 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 they keep their hands at 10 and 2. They don't text and drive. But what happens if they hit an oil slick, hit somebody, and a baby dies? They getting sued for a million dollars. What happens when that attorney checks to see what all properties they have in their name? You just open yourself up to that. Yeah, you successfully avoided probate, but now you are a party to this lawsuit. Bankruptcy. Hey, listen, if, if you're gonna go bankrupt, it's probably gonna happen when you're younger, right? What happens when your son or daughter is, whoever you put on this joint tenancy goes through bankruptcy? Your home and your account is now a part of this. This, what they're putting together, okay? Would any of those scenarios be a concern to any of you? All right. And once again, y'all don't feel bad about this. Everybody's dealing with this. I, I, could, I could run this same PowerPoint for the next 10 years, it'll still be the same, right? All right, so what about an IRA? Anybody here have a 401k, IRA, uh, a TSP, you know, all of that? What happens when you pass away, right? That's your daughter, right? The child receives a lump sum. Now, your child, Whoever your beneficiary is for your IRA, your 401k, your thrift savings plans, your 403b, they have the option of getting this periodically or getting a lump sum. What do you think they're going to choose? Oh, they want that money, baby. They want that lump sum. And guess how long it takes on average for somebody to blow through this lump sum? 18 months. Could they put into an IRA too? They could. But they, you, you said the kid, if they're smart. And once again, I'm smart in spots. 
<laughs> I just stay around my spots, right? But a lot of people don't know what to do when they get that lump sum of money like that. And when I say that money is gone on average within 18 months, it's not reinvested, it's gone. A fool in their money. There you go. You, you can't do it with the, uh, the way uh, they typically, but you can do it if you have your trust set up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like Let's. You know they have a spending problem. Absolutely. Some other. They call them spendthrifts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the old school word, right? <laughs> I, I, I learned that term when I, when I got my uh, designations. I'm like, spendthrift, all right? I mean, that's a cool word. And then I, you know, I watch a bunch of uh, shows from the 40s and the 30s, right? And then they use spendthrift like it's an everyday word. Uh, he's a spendthrift, see, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Y'all like that? Yeah, yeah. I miss my calling, right? Right? So, so, but anyway, so basically, if you, let's say you have a child who isn't necessarily that good with money. Anybody in here have a, a beneficiary, uh, IRA, um, oh, I'm sorry. All this stuff that was happening earlier got my, main, my, my brain going crazy. Anybody have a, a trust with their IRA set up? If you have the right trust set up with your IRA, and, I, and it, they call it an IRA beneficiary trust, but you can do it with your 401k, you can do it with your profit sharing, you can do it with your thrift savings plan, you are able to say exactly how they get the money. And if your child is dealing with anything uh, to do with like, so for example, the, what we're trained to do, whenever you die, let's say uh, your daughter comes in and we say, hey, uh, so sorry about the passing or whatever. Uh, so um, we got this money here. And if it's sitting in a trust, they don't have to take it out. Now you can set up, you can set out how it goes, but they don't have to take it out. What we're trained to do is say, hey, Cindy, it's all right, so um, how's the marriage? And then Cindy says, ah, oh, it's good. And I said, and they said, hold on, I shut the door. How's the marriage? Do you think anything is gonna be happening within the next six to two years, because if six months to two years, because if so, we can keep this money in here and it cannot be considered marital property. That's when she says, oh, okay, well, I didn't know that, <laughs> right? And, I, and you know, a lot of times, you know, that money sits for a little bit, right? But that's what you're able to do. So a child receives the lump sum. So let's say, let's say you have it set up the way people typically have it set up, right? Where the child, you just have them listed as the beneficiary but you don't have it officially set up as a, a IRA beneficiary trust. They receive the lump sum, the 200 uh, grand. Uh, the IRS takes their taxes. Because remember, if it's transferring to your spouse, it's tax free. But if it's transferring to anybody else, they're gonna get taxed on it, all right? So out, out of this 200 grand, uh, the IRS took their $64,000 and it, it remains for the child 136,000, all right? And once again, if you don't mind giving Uncle Sam this money, cool. But if you set it up the right way, it can avoid that, right? Now, and then, so this is essentially the same thing, but it's seven, instead of it being 64,000, it's 74,000. Uh, and once again, 200 proceeds, 500 to a million dollars over beneficiary lifetime tax free, if you do it the right way, right? Uh, st uh, strategy itself pays the taxes you owe. If you do it the right way, if you do it the way that people typically do it, then that's what happens, okay? Scenario number four. If she's single, what if there's a lawsuit or bankruptcy? And once again, not only, so not only did your 200,000 that you saved go to her and then she had to pay taxes, but if she's going through a bankruptcy and a lawsuit at the time, because remember, if it's not in the trust, you cannot stop that transfer. It's going to happen regardless of what she's going through, he or she. And then there's going to be a, a party to this. But if it's in the trust, all they have to do is just not take it until all of those proceedings are done. But it has to be set up. Sierra number four, if married, what if her spouse later files for divorce? Yeah, we talk about divorce a lot, right? Uh, I, when I was getting my, uh, my credentials, my designations, uh, we talked about, you know, it would always bring the room down, right? So uh, a lot of times my instructors would call it fun with divorce, right? Yeah, you, you, if you want to talk about it, you know, try to, but what if she's going through that divorce, like we said? It, it, get, it gets uh, taken away. 
And once again, nobody wants to uh, talk about it, but it happens, all right? With any of that concern, y'all, as it relates to your IRAs, your 401Ks, your 403Bs, your thrift savings plan, yeah? So does anybody have an a insurance broker, a banker, a financial advisor currently? Have they ever mentioned IRA beneficiary trust? One person. And usually when I ask this question, it's maybe out of a room full of people, maybe one person, two person. If y'all have a, it's not your fault. If you have a banker, if you have an insurance broker, if you have a financial advisor and they never mention to you, this to you, it's gonna fall into one or two categories, y'all. Either they don't know how to do it or they didn't care to mention it to, it, to you. Whatever they tell you, they either don't know how to do it or they didn't care to mention it, all right? So what do IRA beneficiary trusts do for you? Remember, this isn't just for IRAs, it's for 401ks and all that stuff. It enables you to do three things. You manage the distribution after you're gone. You might have three children. One ch child might get it over 10 years. One child might get it over two years. One child might get it over five years, right? And if you have uh, the digital platform trust set up like how we got it, you can always go in and change it anytime you want. You can do it from the kitchen table. You can do it from an app over the road, okay? It protects your children against lawsuit. Once again, they don't have to pull this money. They're gonna know that they have access to it, but if they're going through a lawsuit or going through divorce, uh, they can just keep it in there. Uh, judge, she has all of this money sitting in the trust. Yeah, we know. Well, I want, it's in the trust. She never took possession of it yet. It's not her money yet, so therefore it's not considered marital property. All right, anybody in here been married for 10 years, 10 plus? You say you laugh, oh 40? 40 years? 30? Yeah. 44. 44, congratulations. I was about to say my condolences. <laughs> congratulations, right? Is it guaranteed that you will be able to make decisions for your husband or your wife if something happens to them? Health care decisions. Is it guaranteed? No, not if you don't have the health care power of attorney. Do y'all have a health care power of attorney? As of right now, if something were to happen to either one of you, legally you can't make those decisions. You, what you would have to do is you would have to go to a court to get them to give you permission to make uh, decisions. They're going to check to see exactly what your uh, capability, uh, your uh, competency is. So, for example, here's a story. Uh, it was a couple that came in, been married 50 plus years. Uh, the wife was 82, the husband was 86. Sat down, right? Now, whenever we go over this, it's just, a, I just do an hour presentation. It's not like a profit, it, it's not like a, uh, what do they call those, timeshares? Mm -hmm. Listen, I ain't, I'm not trying to you know, convince nobody. I just want you to have the information, right? And this couple said, you know, uh, we'll come back later. Keep in mind, they're 82 and 86. Why don't you come back when you're 90, all right? <laughs> all right? They're 82 and they're 86. What happens three months later? She calls and says, my husband went out like he does every day. I'll be back. I'm about to go to Walmart. I'll be back in an hour. Hour passes by. Three hours passes by. Husband doesn't come home. All of a sudden, she gets a call from Walmart saying, hey, can you come get your husband? He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know where his car is. He lost competency right then and there. It doesn't have to be an accident. It doesn't have to be a stroke. You can lose capacity like that, right? So what happens when now she's trying to get the uh, health care power of attorney set up? The attorney's not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to go to a court. And what is the judge required to do before they give you a health care power attorney after the fact? They have to check your capacity. So, nope. No. Check it out. Look it up. Mm -hmm. Same for your spouse. Because how do they know y'all still in good, you know, good standing? Right? Y'all could be estranged. Hey, they don't know. Listen, hey. 
One thing I learned a long time ago when I watch those when I watch those uh those shows on um Lifetime and those uh those death shows, like whenever a man kills somebody in those shows, oh my God. Whenever a woman get oh, I can understand. What she, <laughs> you know, she was dealing with a lot. He, he you know, he really put some burdens on her, right? Right? So so they don't know. So in order for you to make sure that you have this, you have to do that. How many of you look after your grandkids? What happens if your children are on vacation in Mexico on a boat and your, your grandchild falls and gets a cut and you don't have this in place? Good luck. And you know more about it than most people. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. But when you have a properly set up estate plan, we, we do all of this for you. We ask you all of these questions. We figure out what needs to be signed. If you're watching your grandkids, you need to have this, right? Because you need to be able to make quick decisions if you can't get in touch with your kids, all right? Would any of that concern you? Probably, seems like, all right? But by medical thing, though, if it's something critical, mm -hmm. if it's like threatening, you can go to the hospital. The hospital would treat, yeah. but would you be able to say what treatments and if they can and can't? I'm pretty forceful. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty forceful. So, so you, you see what you would do. You will use your your years of experience, like because you know how to get in. Like for example, uh, when I teach uh, when I teach continuing education, a lot of it be nurses, and we were talking about hospice, and what they were saying was, I thought as soon as somebody go to hospice, it was almost guaranteed that they were about to die. Right. What I learned was it's 50-50, because what happens when they run out of Medicare, Medicaid? Well, they, they do cover them. I mean, it is, it's a long-term coverage. I don't, and, it, and, and Medicare, 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 Medicaid changes mm -hmm. frequently. Mm -hmm. The rules change frequently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, what, 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 what I heard, what a lot of nurses do when they know that they have a, a patient that's running out of money, but they still need a uh, round the clock mm -hmm. treatment. They know how to get that paperwork to look like they about to die in about a year, two oh, years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the ho they get to go to the hospice. hospice. And, hospice. and then they recover in hospice, right? That's a little, but what I'm saying is, huh? It depends on the diagnosis. Absolutely, they know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And once again, I didn't know that until I was teaching. They're like, all right, you ran out of money? All right, we're gonna get you in hospice. And the way they get you in the hospice, it seemed like you about to die soon. But then you were able to recover without having to, you know, go broke, right? This is just information, not advice. <laughs> Scenario number six, does anybody have any dependents, any children, any grandchildren with special needs? Special needs. Well, here, this right here is Stacy Pearson. She's on my staff. She's a celebrity. Uh, Years in the legislative uh, assistant and advocate lobbied at every level of the government for those who can't speak for themselves, including speaking at the United Nations. She's done that twice. Uh, discovered families falling through the cracks, created a product that covers all dependents. What happens is if you have a special needs child and you leave them a lump sum of money, you just kick them out of all of their benefits. So then the child has to try to, they have to try to figure out how to get the money out of the child's name, and then they got to go through the requalification process all over again. If you have a special needs trust set up. I have a friend who's special needs. Mm. She's all, she has cerebral palsy, but she's got it all here. Mm -hmm. And her health has changed where she needs to be in a facility, and mm -hmm. I just went through all that. Got it. With special needs trust? Mm -hmm. So you have a lot more knowledge than most people, right? Uh, and, and, but when you, when, you, when you sign up with our program, she typically charges $500 an hour. Once again, it's free through our program. And once again, I know some of you are doing it at home. You got free attorney. You got free to do How y'all making money? Don't worry about it. We making money, right? Uh, it, we got the business model set up, right? When you help as many people as we help, uh, you're able to work the way we can work, okay? And like I say, I, I know a lot of people that's dealing with special needs, and uh, that can prob that's probably something that you need to know about. What about scenario number seven? If your spouse is in a coma or becomes incapacitated and your spouse has an IRA, what assets will you have to the money without proper documents? Do y'all know? Goose egg. If your spouse is in a coma, you have no access to that money. We can't even tell you. If y'all were to call me and you didn't have the proper documents set up, Legally, I can't even tell you. You don't have no access to it. I can't tell you how much money is in it. 
You got to have it set up beforehand. You got to be proactive, not reactive. All right. Scenario number eight. What rights do you have to get information or make decisions on your adult child without the proper documents? Does anybody have any children over the age of 18? Without the proper documents, you can't talk for your children. You can't help them out. And once again, they, just like uh, he mentioned, they're just sitting there. All right? But if you do everything in advance, are you good? All right, so proper estate planning can address all these scenarios, okay? What are we making? Is it 2.30? We're almost done, y'all. So what are the most common questions? A will or a trust? And like, like I said, uh, a trust in most instances is better than a will. Uh, what a will does is guarantees court. That, that's, it guarantees court. If all you have is a will, you can guarantee court, right? Why? Because all a will does is tell the judge what to do. Okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Single woman. And y'all, this is going to be the only question. <laughs> Go ahead. Single woman. Mm -hmm. No living relatives. Two nephews. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. A will wouldn't, wouldn't be sufficient. If what are you willing to them? Uh, a house? Any investments, house, anything. Is the house in your name? Okay, can a dead person own property? No. So how are they going to retitle it? But if it's in a will. Yeah, but it's in a will saying that you want this person to have it, right? Right. Can a dead person own property? Oh, well, the will's not good. It's no, because the only way to get it retitled is through? Probably. Yeah, through court. Now, if you have a trust set up, the legal mechanisms already switch it over to what you want to do. Not only does it do it automatically, but nobody knows your business. So you can't take that will and go to the, the circuit clerk's office and have that title changed to... You're talking about changing the title while you're alive. No, I'm talking about I die. Mm -hmm. The only one that's left is my, say, one nephew. Mm -hmm. I have a will that says I'm going to leave the house to my mm -hmm. nephew. He can't go and just take a copy of the will and take it to the court and have it changed? He went to the court, but he has to go through court to do it. He has to get the judge to say it's okay to get it retitled. He can't just go to the clerk's office and no. get the title changed. Because, uh, unfortunately, a dead person can't own property. Because what he's going to do is he's going to show a will saying that you gave it to him. Right. And they're going to be like, okay, well... Um, uh, it's, so, so whose name is on the title? Okay, we have to get it retitled. That, that's, that's, that's the way it is. And the only way to do it, because if you were alive, you could sign all the documents you needed to retitle in his name. You're not alive anymore. So he has to go so through court. I die, I would need to sign like a quick claim deed, giving it to him. No, a claim. Well, if you want to do that, but then now you have somebody that owns your property. Now, you might love your nephew. I like him too, so, you know, whatever, right? But once again, if you have a trust set up, it's already done. You still own it, and whenever you die, it switches over to him. However, if you don't do it, a dead, unfortunately, a dead person can't own property, so you can't transfer it, so they have to go through the court in order to do it. They can't just go through regular title because you're not there to sign any documents. Okay. You can do that, but remember, you open yourself to liability. Yeah. If you have a joint tenancy with somebody else's name on it, what happens if they get sued? What happens if they go through a divorce? But it's with, right, even with the right of survivorship? When you say right of survivorship, meaning that you're able to, you stand in your house, and, and when you die, whoever you have gets the house. Yes, that avoids probate, because we already discussed it, but you open yourself to liability. What happens if before you die, this person gets sued? What happened is before you die, this person goes through a divorce, right? Now it's all included, all right? So probate court, what is it? And once again, probate is, it has its place, right? Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a screen come up that showed you how probate is, is necessary in some instances. But you, you shouldn't just voluntarily do it, all right? Can it be avoided? Absolutely. All right, so what is probate court? So remember we were talking about a, a, a will guarantees 
a will guarantees court. So what is probate court? And this is, the, this is the legal definition. Granting of probate is the first step in the legal process of administering a deceased person's estate. It resolves the claims while distributing all of the deceased person's property under a will. When you go through probate, can I contest your will? Anybody can contest your will. When you have a trust, who can contest it? Nobody. Nobody. Okay. All right. You don't mind me asking? I know it's the only question. Yeah, right? man. We all good. Hey, we all friends here, right? One quick question. Okay. Just for the room. So, if you leave your house to your kids, nephew, or anything else, isn't it true that if it's not a trust, then they also have to pay taxes on the increased value of the home? The current market was passed on to them. Step up in basis. Correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. That's my friend, y'all. <laughs> you wanted to help me get that one extra client off of that. Thank you, man. You all right with me? <laughs> Let's see. Hmm? Yeah, I gotta watch you, man. I gotta watch you. <laughs> so. So why does probate court exist? And like I said, th there's a reason for it. All right, so let's give an example. This is, a, this is a, a landscape. And let's say somebody comes up and he says he's a landscaper. He, uh, he surveys the uh, property and say, hey, I can redo your landscaping for 10,000. And Betty says, perfect, that's a great price. And the landscaper says, all right, uh, just give me half now, give me 5,000 now and I'm gonna get started. He does his thing, it looks perfect. Betty loves it, right? He said, all right, great, just give me the balance. He said, well, actually, I'm about to go out of town to see my daughter, um, just send me an invoice. So the landscaper sends the invoice, right? Uh, a week goes by, don't hear from him. Two weeks go by, don't hear from him. He calls the house, Betty don't pick up the phone. So finally he shows up and Betty's son answers the door. What does the son say? When she was down in Pittsburgh, she got into an accident and she died, unfortunately. You think Betty's son is gonna write a check for 5,000? Some people, I'm, stranger things have happened, right? But that's not his responsibility. If this landscaper wants his money, he has to go through probate. So there is a, a, a need of, for people to facilitate probate, right? However, you don't want to have to just voluntarily do it. So what are the problems with probate? One, the fees, right? So here, here's how it is for Florida. If you're at $40,000 or less, the, uh, the minimum fee is $1,500. Uh, 40000 to 70000 the minimum fee is $2,250. 70000 to 100000 the minimum fee is $3,000. 100000 to a million dollars. The, it's $3,000 plus 3%. For estates above $1 million, attorneys will receive further percentages calculated on the value of the estate. According to Florida law, attorneys can also obtain additional compensation from any extraordinary services such as involvement in will construction and contest. Because remember, it's all open to contest. All it takes is one person to come up and say, hey, I was supposed to get that coffee mug. That's a contest. And that attorney is going to charge appropriately, right? Uh, determining beneficiaries, because guess what? You, did, what? you died in test state, and the word dying in test state meaning you died without a will. That, now they got to determine the beneficiaries, because remember, this is just the start off. Uh, handling uh, adversarial litigation against the estate, you know these kids are about to be fighting, right? Uh, uh, preparing tax returns, and once again, this is the start off, but if you look at all of the things that attorneys are legally able to charge more money for, you know they're going to charge a lot more. That, that couch that's only worth $50, all of a sudden it's worth $500, right? A, a lot of stuff is going to be maximized. And once again, all somebody has to do to, is to go to CaseNet and see exactly everything. Because what happens is when you don't set up the trust in advance, that's when they inventory everything and they charge for all of that. All right? Well, you know, 40000 less, 1500 Because when you go more, it gives the 20000 But I thought it probably starts at 40000 Yes, ma'am. So you've been, you know, you've been a little... Because uh. <laughs> think about it. If I said 40000 or more, that's 2000 So it sounds like you're saying, uh, grammatically, just put 40000 But if you have less, if I have 38000 there's no probate. 
Yes, technically. Okay. You're good. What's your name? <laughs> I'm trying to block you on the phone, then, man. What's the value of all the things and mm -hmm. stuff? Yeah, huh? The stuff. And once again, they're going to determine what your stuff is worth. And like I said before, I didn't see, but most of you drove here in 40 grand. You're already there, not you? <laughs> oh, she got a bicycle. <laughs> you got what? No, yeah, but you have, you have a driver. I saw it, man. I, I saw you got him, man. Listen, I, I know who to look for. <laughs> Court appointed. I hear you. It sound good. All right, so where does your dollars go? This is where all of your money goes in probate. All right? Dunkin' Donuts. Wouldn't you rather your money go to your people? I think so. I think so. You're also dealing with delays, all right? How, who knows how long it takes for a probate to go on in Florida? Six to the nine days. At least, at least three months, typically, on average. So what's happening while all of these delays? Who's paying the mortgage if you still have a mortgage? Yeah, your most successful child. Who's paying the utilities and all that? Your most successful child. Yeah, your most successful child. Who's paying? And what if, what if you die right at uh, November? and then the property taxes come due. Your most successful child, is your successful child gonna get their money back? Nope, nope. and your kids ain't gonna talk for five Christmases. I can solve the family problem. How are you gonna solve it? Make me the beneficiary. There you go. <laughs> and then they won't fight among each other. They'll fight you. <laughs> Absolutely. See, you, you look for opportunity. I like it, I like it, all right? But, it, it, but once again, one of the things what we talked about, when you can name a, a person are persons as executives of your estate. But you cannot guarantee, I'm sorry, what's your name? Rose. You can't guarantee that Rose is gonna still be blooming out here, right? <laughs> Rose, her petals might be gone by the time you die, right? You don't know, all right. Life insurance is different. What's that? Um, as far as, like if you die, you have life insurance, mm -hmm. they're gonna get that money. They're gonna get that money um, uh, tax-free, right? But unless you set up a spendthrift trust clause, it's gonna the creditors are able to get to it. Yeah, when you, yeah, your your people get the money tax free. But if you don't set up a spendthrift trust clause, spendthrift, spendthrift, I'm sorry, spendthrift trust. Say that five times fast. If you don't set that up, the creditors are able to take all of it. Google it. Google it. Mm -hmm. If I leave you X amount of money, mm -hmm. thinking you're going to bury me with it, mm -hmm. they cut you the check. Yeah, they don't have to. They don't have to. Yeah, they don't have to. I said I'd come back. Oh, yeah, you'll come back and look for them, right? And, and, I'm, and I'm just the opposite. Uh, I told my granddad, I said, hey, I want to be cremated because I don't want no, listen, funerals are for the living, right? I told him that. He said, well, you ain't going to know what's going to happen. <laughs> he basically said, hey, we're we, we going we to put you in a box. <laughs> Trust me. All right. And like I said, who's paying the house payment in these three months, these three to six months? Uh, your most successful child, your most successful child, your most successful child, if, if you have it. And once again, this is what starts all of the drama. This is what starts all of the discord. Right. Three. Number three, public record. Your probate estate must be listed in a newspaper three times. If you are going through probate, they got to list it in the newspaper. And guess what? Somebody you never even met before can just contest it. Because it's some people, that's all they do is go through probate. And they look to see who don't got no, and then they contest and all these things. Right? Yeah. Do they ever get anything? Yeah. It's some people who are, criminals are much smarter than regular people. Like, you, you got to be smart to think about, I can't keep up with criminals. Like, I, I, listen, even if I wanted to, I can't keep up with how they move, right? They usually are ahead of us when it comes to thinking about innovative ways to take advantage of people. And yes, they get it. If they're the only ones contesting and nobody else has the, uh, the legal uh, money or anything to fight them, what is the judge going to do? All right? Contested, exposing your, pro, uh, your probate estate to the public can lead to this. 
If you have your trust set up, you don't have to do all of this. But if you do not and you go through probate, your estate is going to be paying for your, these, these newspaper articles. Hmm? Yeah, that's not cheap. Because they, they know, why do you think these newspaper companies still around? They get these. What's that? A newspaper? That has that listed. Mm hmm. Oh, that, the probate? And, 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 all that has all that stuff listed. And listen. I don't know the name of it, but I was sitting on my porch. Mm hmm. And my um, partner had picked one up and he was really using it to put down my wall, under mold. Mm hmm. I was sitting there going, What is this? And he said, Take a look. And I started reading through it and it blew my mind. And it's pages and pages and pages. Oh, probate. And y'all, and this is an affluent area, y'all. I recommend y'all get the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> A will equals probate, right? So listen, all of this is going into, uh, you got your family property, your boat, your jet ski, your motorcycle, your car, your house. You got your cash, you got your stocks, you got your security. Anybody in here have cryptocurrency? No? Hey man, y'all better get on it, man. There's some crypto millionaires out here, right? What a lot of people don't know about cryptocurrency is in the terms and conditions, it's a limited lease. Unless you have the right document set up in your trust, as soon as you die, you know, not only do you not have access, your beneficiaries don't have access to it. Uh, the, the law, uh, and um, don't make me lie to you, it's... it's all the digital. Uh, so what it is, is one of the things that we offer once you set up on this platform is uh, you have your, your screen name and your password to so your Facebook account, mm -hmm. to your PayPal, to your cryptocurrency, to our, we have all of that set up. And then when you die, that's when your family can have access to it, right? Uh, and, and, and so cryptocurrency is included, but you just have to have the right language. Hey, did you just get here or are you leaving? No, I just got to run, but all right. my Oh yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you, right, definitely. All right, all right. 10% uh, liquidation costs. You got attorney's fees, you got executive's fees, you got accounting fees. This is all if you're going through probate. 30% of taxes. You got federal estate taxes. You got uh, state taxes. Florida, we don't have to deal with state taxes. And you have income taxes. All right? What happens? After all of this is done, your family ends up only getting 60% of your estate. All right? Now, we, I, we can't guarantee that we're going to get this completely down to zero. But at least we can get it, you know, get away 90 percent, you know, a good, good amount of that down. All right. But we can get rid of all of this. All right. To where your family gets 100 percent. All right. Elvis Presley, 10 million dollar estate, 7.3 million to probate and others. He had 10 million dollars and 7.3 went to everybody else. Howard Hughes, 2.5 billion dollar estate back then. Right. A hundred people filed claims. All right, seven years to settle proceeds went to 22 cousins. All right, he probably ain't even talked to them. All right, Michael Jackson, one billion dollar estate, three kids, two ex wives, mother went to probate court, seven years to settle. All right, Abraham Lincoln was an attorney, he didn't have no will, he had no estate plan. All right, he didn't expect Martin Luther King, no will, no trust. Kids have been fighting for 45 years. He had a nightmare. Y'all didn't get the connection? Uh, okay. <laughs> no. I had a dream. Turned to a nightmare. I'm sorry. The delayed laugh is just <laughs> And y'all, and we're right here to the end. And just so you know, this is still happening. When Prince died, he had, what, over $300 million. But because he did not have an estate set up, because he didn't have everything set up, he had to, his family had to borrow money from George Lopez just to pay for the funeral. So if what happens when you, no, your money is frozen when you don't have everything set up, that's when you have to borrow money from somebody. And then what happens? Somebody doesn't get paid back, and then they don't talk for five Christmases. All right? All right. All right, y'all. And like I was saying, uh, what we also have set up with this uh, program is uh, you can leave videos. Uh, you can set it up to where uh, whoever you want can still be getting um, birthday cards, uh, Christmas cards. Uh, you can put all of your family photos. We have people who all they do is scan in photos. So you know how those old photo books, you can have it set up where all of the photos are scanned in. 
You can have video explaining why you made your decisions, why you decided to give what to who, all that good stuff. And once again, I'd rather them be mad at me dead than each other alive. Yeah, are you? Rose. Because a rose, a rose by any other name still smells it sweet. All right, y'all. So, yeah, so, y'all, this, this is uh, everything. Uh, let me just, uh, all right, so just to break it down, this is the grantor settler. You got the assets, you got the car, you got the money, you got your broker statement. You put it all into the trust, right? It said revocable trust. Yes. Tell me the difference between revocable and irrevocable. And yeah, well, you want, while you're living, if you still want to make changes, you want a revocable trust. Okay. All right? And then when you die, it triggers into an irrevocable trust. If you're, if you're living. Automatically? It triggers, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, I want it to trigger into it. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, because uh, if you're dead, you're not going to be making no changes. Right, but what I'm saying is, if I have a revocable trust mm -hmm. and I die, mm -hmm. does they all go to irrevocable as you, when you die? Yeah, typically, yeah. Typically. Now, if you still had a, a, a spouse that's still alive, then, it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you, you, it's going to be irrevocable for the most part. Okay. Right? Not, not, not to say that there might be some people who want to have a uh, keep it revocable. I don't, I don't, I've never seen that. But it might, you know, people might do that. But it's going to be irrevocable. You can also have an irrevocable trust while you're alive if you want it to remove the strings. Let's say you want it uh, to get this money out of your estate completely, and you want to say, hey, I have no access or control of this money, all right? That's when you would do an irrevocable trust while you're alive. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You, you don't want to just, I don't, it, you know, most people don't just set up an irrevocable trust. They usually keep it revocable and have a triggering effect when they die. Mm -hmm. But I don't know whether they have the triggering effect set into it, but it, unless that I'm yeah, it's actually, typically I'm automatic. automatic. Yeah, because I, I don't, you know, I'm in, in the business that I'm in, I, I try to never say 100%, right. but typically automatically. Yeah, also, How do they have to take something from probate if I wanted to, let's say you died and I wanted to go through probate on it, how long do I have to bring that up? Well, there's no, there's no limit to how long a probate can go. Uh, now, it can be settled. It usually, it's, it's usually a minimum of at least three months. But just like we mentioned, you got 45 years. You see what I'm saying? To, uh, 45 years to come in and sue? And I can answer more questions <laughs> when you set up an appointment. But yeah, uh, usually when you go through probate, it's contestable. It's contestable. So you've got 45 years that you can I'm not an attorney, so uh, yeah. what I'm saying is usually it yeah. stays open, and usually it's a bunch of claims being made. But I, I would love to talk more to you about it. But just, you know, if you can set up, a, you know, we, we have a great conversation, and that and that way I can bring Sierra in, and she can answer the legal questions. But I want to thank all of y'all so much for spending this time and dealing with the uh, the legal, the, you know, with the uh, te technical difficulties. Please, if you want to uh, set up an appointment, just uh, circle it on the paper. But at the very least, you can talk to two attorneys every week for the next year, and they're not going to know anything about this platform. I can guarantee you that. It's because they're based out of Florida, right? And they have to follow Florida rules, all right? So if you just, you don't have to buy anything, but if you want to learn something, please circle a day and a time, and I'll call y'all, and we can get this thing going. Huh? Jurisdictional shopping. You saying the attorney have to be licensed? No, you do. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm licensed in multiple states, y'all. Check me out. All right, y'all. Uh, so I want to thank you so much, and uh, please get home safely. And um, and and you can put your uh, your clipboards at the back of the room. All right. Uh, not yet. Do you need me to be? I don't know. I've got a big situation that I can explain to you.